Thank you all from the bottom of my heart for being here today to honor my father. I want to, I have a few things I want to share with you, but I want to start by thanking this choir for all your years of service and faithfulness. God bless you and thank you so much. I want to thank the musicians. How incredible it is to see Brother Tony so faithful, so fair. My father appreciates you so much. Thank you so much. And to our niece and to, to Sherry. God bless you for your service. And to my Uncle Doyle, my favorite uncle, and my dad's closest and favorite brother. Thank you so much for being here today. Love to you all from my two brothers, Larry and Gary. They're both very sorry they cannot be here today. I want to share a few things with you. You know, I'm so glad you're here, Uncle Doyle, because my memories are so strong of you with my family. Over 50 years ago, my mother and father, my Uncle Doyle and I, as a child, as a baby, drove to Detroit, Michigan. Ronnie Burnett tells the story of my dad driving down a side street in a long Cadillac car with horns of a bull mounted on the hood of the car. My dad rolled out the windows and said to this very young 12-year-old boy, would you like a job helping me put up a tent? And the kid said, yes, he would. And they went to Nine Mile and Van Dyke and they put up a tent. And he ended up not only helping my dad put up the tent, but he ended up sleeping on the property to guard the instruments and guard the equipment and the 500 handmade wooden chairs that my job at five years old was to dust. <laughs> Ronnie's sister, Patty Smith, is with us today. Thank you for your family and for being part of this church. <laughs> the Tent Revival with the Texas Musical Hearts was a tremendous blessing to everyone in the area. Like Rick Hoskins said, people came from all over the world, really, all over the state and other states, to experience this unique and amazing musical talent that the Hart family had, the spellbinding preaching coming out of my father, Reverend Ralph Hart. This was a new kind of revival, a kind of revival that Detroit hadn't seen before. And it was months and months of hot weather in the tent, and then suddenly November was here and it got cold. People started bundling up with coats and covering themselves with blankets. Daddy decided to rent a theater at 10 Mile and Van Dyke, and it would happen to be called Liberty. Some of the crowds were so big that they decided they needed to move, and they found a new church, a very large church at 7 Mile and Woodward, which is exactly where we are today in Liberty Temple. As you know, our family was on television and radio, CKLW, every Saturday for many, many years and dozens of radio shows every month. Daddy would later move his TV ministry to the church and preach right here from this very pulpit. And in the last two and a half decades, Melba Hart has completely and tirelessly dedicated her life to supporting and sustaining the wonderful traditions of the Hart Brothers, the powerful ministries, the inspiring music, the choir, the musicians, and the love of my father and the love of you. Yeah. To Brother Dennis, who came to this church as a young child and is now following in my father's footsteps. We know those are big steps to fall into. We know. But I want you to know, Dennis, my father loved you, and I love you for loving my father. And thank you for all your service to him and to this church. And may God bless you and continue your wonderful ministry. My dad's faith 
was endless. His ministry as a faith healer was renowned. He would never ever leave a service. I witnessed it all my life, and I know Uncle Doyle did as well. He would never leave a service without everybody that wanted to be healed got healed, be it five people or 5,000 or 15,000. He witnessed so many thousands of miracles in his life. One, of course, his own at 16, being hit by a drunken driver, pronounced dead at Parkland Hospital, and being brought back to life. It would also, he would also survive. Melvin and I have talked about this so many times. So many near-death experiences. His life at 62 was almost taken by a stunning and massive heart attack that kept him in the ICU for 10 days with very little hope to survive. He kept saying, you don't know my God. He survived an almost deadly dog attack, the fall down the flight of stairs which broke his jaw. The doctor said, you'll never have teeth again. He said, you don't know my God. Car accident where he blocked out. He blacked out and hit a truck and hit another truck. The fall off the golf cart where he broke his ribs. Many of the, the, the cancer that he had, the bladder cancer, several bouts with pneumonia and on and on and on and God healed him every single time. He never doubted his faith in God. He lived a life of faith. I know it, you know it, and God knows it. He taught me how important faith was. I am the person I am today because he taught me commitment and striving to be better at the love of God and the love of faith. He taught me to always be a giver. He said, give it your all. Don't do it if you can't give it your all. And that has helped me so much in my life. He taught me to pray. He taught me to thank God every day for my blessings, no matter how small. Daddy, you were always so supportive of my endeavors, be it opening a lemonade stand or opening on Broadway. You were there. <laughs> I have always been so proud of my father, and I hope he was proud of me. To the rest of the world, he was a great preacher, a dedicated pastor, a Bible teacher, an author, over 50 books, a leader, a counselor, a well-known TV and radio evangelist, a gifted singer, a gifted musician, a very talented athlete, baseball, ping pong, a bowler, champion bowler, tournament winning golfer. He could do anything. He really could, he could do anything. And he taught himself to do everything. He didn't have any formal training in any of this. He was a loving brother. He loved his brothers, and his brothers loved him. He was a loving uncle, he was a loving husband, and he was a friend, and he was a great grandfather. <laughs> While you all knew all these things about my dad, to me, he was always just daddy. You know, I have stood in this pulpit since I was smaller than this pulpit. I was here the day that Brother Stringer finished painting these murals. I was here the day that they redid all the deco painting that used to be up there. I was here the first service this room ever had. It's so compelling to be at this pulpit and not the over and see my dad. I will miss him. I will miss him so much. I feel his presence with me every day. And I will miss him saying, right there, right there in that spot, every single time I was right there in that spot, what are you going to sing? What are you going to sing? And he was, he was so easy to please. It didn't matter. He said, bless someone. Bless someone and you will be blessed. That's what he said. I want you to hear these words and I hope that you agree with me. Because my dad, I believe his work and his ministry here on earth has changed lives. He made a difference. Through God's power, God's love, God's miraculous touch on his healing. 
He has touched every single one of you or you wouldn't be here today. And think of the people that he has touched all over the world. He spoke, in, he preached and healed people in 50 countries and all over the world on four continents. Your musical, your preaching, your joyous spirit, Daddy, lives through your three children, Linda, Larry, and Gary, and your grandson, Daniel. My father was the most positive man I've ever known in my life. His last words were glory. My gratitude is endless for all you have taught me. I will always remember you and give you thanks. Amen.